what resource do food service directors use across the country? Next on Food for Thought. Hi, I'm Jody Rissi, the host for Food for Thought, and thanks for watching. Today I have two guests from the Institute of Child Nutrition, and they're going to share wonderful resources, training, as well as the opportunities that they have across the country with food service directors just like myself in Anne Arundel County. Welcome, Dr. Alicia Campbell Hall and Lisa Rogers to Food for Thought. Can hi, Jody. We... Hi, how are thanks you? Thanks for having us. Greetings from the University of Mississippi in Oxford. It's a beautiful sunny day. Thank you. I wish I was there in person visiting you today. <laughs> if we could first start, Dr. Hall uh, Campbell, can you just tell us a little bit, and I know we're going to go back and forth, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at the Institute of Child Nutrition? Sure. Hi, Jody. again, thank you for having us. We're honored to be able to um, participate in the Food for Thought um, episode today. Um, I am Alicia Hall Campbell. I am the Executive Director of the Institute of Child Nutrition. And my role and responsibility is to oversee and manage all of the activities of the Institute, and they range across uh, a multitude of facets. Um, we're responsible for applied research, going out, talking to um, child nutrition professionals and operators to kind of gather best practices and strategies, and that research sort of feeds into our education and training resources. We develop trainings and materials. And then um, we have a training arm that goes out and executes um, the trainings and resources all across the country. So we're not, even though we're housed at the University of Mississippi, um, we are responsible for conducting trainings and educational resources um, for all federally funded child nutrition programs all across the U.S. as well as the territories. Um, so we have a really um, large scope and reach. And um, that's sort of what we do. And one of the things I just want to mention that all of our resources are available free of charge. So you can mm -hmm. download them, utilize them in any aspect, and they are accepted for continuing education units for the School Nutrition Association and other allied organizations and professional organizations. Um, so that's just a quick snapshot of, of my role with the Institute. So, so Dr. Hall Campbell, it's kind of interesting. I think you hear all that, right? And it's you know, it's the free resources and the depth of what the resources are, are what amaze me each and every time in Anne Arundel County. And I think one of the neatest things that, and I know we've worked together for a long time, but something that we took from the Institute um, a few years ago are the archive photos. Oh. And in our office space, we have the best pictures and they're just darling, right? It's just pictures from so long ago of the early days of the, you know, school lunch program um, we still have, you know, behind our main desk is when uh, the National School Lunch Act was being signed off. So what a great, and it was being there at the Institute with you all. And I was like, this is awesome. Like, yeah. It, so again, it's not, it's training, it's marketing, it's flyers, it's simple little videos of how to, it's everything at your fingertips. So for that, as a food service director, we really thank you for that. Awesome. Thanks. I'm glad to hear that. There's always uh, an honor to hear that, but that is one of the things that we are um, sort of mandated to do is to preserve the history of the programs. And so, as you mentioned, when President Truman was signing the National School Lunch right. Act, you know, we have a lot of um, photographs and collectibles and things like that in our archives. And so people can access that information free of charge as well. And then you've mentioned that, you know, you have photos, but we went to Salt Lake City and they had some of the photos in their central kitchen. So it's always mm -hmm. so nice to be able to see that because it is a preservation of, of the program as well. It's funny to tie that in. So when we were at Salt Lake City, right, for major city, right. mm -hmm. when I was in their um, facility, again, I was so inspired. I, you know, the messaging and I think the passion that school food service leaders have and folks that are in school food service, it just comes out. And when I left there, that's when I took all my notes, right, of how do I replicate <laughs> this for Anne Arundel right. County? Right. Um, so it, 
it's just, it really all ticks and ties way closer than we all know, right? Yeah. So that's what, you know, that's one of the things that we sort of, we're a resource repository, you know, it's no need to go out and recreate the wheel. There are some great things that, you know, you and other directors across the country are doing. How can we take that information, share it so other, you know, districts across the country or in smaller rural areas um, can take that and modify it to best fit their operations. So again, it, we're, we're a resource repository of information. So taking and collecting and gathering the information that districts are doing um, creatively and just sharing those ideas and best practices and strategies so others can take and kind of cherry pick what works best for them. Right. So they're not having to start totally from scratch. So absolutely. Right. Yeah. And I think that is the joy of it. And as an operator of a larger district, um, I just think that's the value added, right? I think we see the passion on your side all the time and your staff, but to be able to just take the piece you want, because there's pieces that might not apply in your district. Absolutely. Um, but just to be able to go pick, see it, um, and know it's, I don't know, it's just done in a way that is so professional and the marketing of all your pieces, just everything. It's really, um, it's A plus. I'm in the school environment, so... Thank you, and, and we love to use it. So, you know, if somebody's out there watching, right, and it's a school food service director, they need to log on, you know, to the <laughs> website and really take advantage of all that you have to offer. Um, Dr. Hall, how could we talk a little bit, too, about, like, who are some of your national partners, and how do you collaborate, you know, from the Institute with these partners across the country? Sure. If you don't mind, I'm going to share my screen and just kind of go over a few of those items. Um, to just kind of pinpoint and share to your audience um, kind of who we are and what we do. So um, here, um, again, um, before I go into this bill, I, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to all of the operators out there. Um, this has been the most challenging year um, for everyone all across this country. Um, but food service directors and operators and, and staff have been on the front lines, making sure that our nation's children have continued to receive healthy and safe and nutritious meals throughout this pandemic. And so without you, your efforts and attention and diligent work, um, you know, who knows where we would be. So first, before I start, I just want to pause and just say thank you for all of the wonderful work that you and your team, but everyone across the country have done to make sure that children are continuously receiving those meals. Um, the Institute is funded through the United States Department of Agriculture, Food and Nutrition Services Division. And um, our mission is to provide relevant research-based information and services that advance the continuous improvement of child nutrition programs. And that's just a snapshot prior to COVID. Of one of our trainings, you know, people come in from all across the country. Uh, again, we go out across the country to conduct um, what are the latest standards and strategies that operators can implement in their programs? Um, as we talk about some of our national goals and objectives, um, we conducted a strategic plan back in 2018, and it is time for us to renew that. Um, but some of our focus are to continue to expand our awareness and outreach to develop and provide customer-focused-based resources and trainings that incorporate appropriate technology. And as we're talking about being in a pandemic, technology now is on the forefront of all that we're doing. We're having this conversation through a virtual aspect. So making sure that that's a priority. And that was one of our goals well before the pandemic. And thank goodness, because we were able to pivot so quickly um, to be able to um, provide virtual and online courses um, during the pandemic. Um, we want to conduct and disseminate high quality research that's responsive to child nutrition professionals. Um, support the professional growth and development of current and future professionals, as well as preserve the history and position the Institute to continue its mission. Um, you mentioned the collaboration with national partners. Um, that's one of our um, one of our strategic pillars is to collaborate with internal and external stakeholders whose missions and visions align with who we are. And then stewardship, you know, that's really important because we receive federal funds. And just to make sure we're fulfilling our obligations to all of our stakeholders um, to the highest level of standards there. Um, some of our national partners, um, of course, USDA and its regional offices. Um, we work with the American Commodity and Distribution Association, ACTA. 
the American Heart Association, the Culinary Institute of America's Healthy Kids Collaborative, of course, the School Nutrition Association, and Share Our Strength. That's just a few. Of course, there are a few more national allied organizations that we work with, but also we work with all of the state agencies across the country, as well as the territories. We've been on two calls this week with state agency directors and staff. And we work with sponsors of um, the CACFP and summer food service programs, um, districts like you, uh, we're bringing them in, um, gathering that information um, through exploratory work groups and really just trying to see what the needs are. Um, the whole focus of what we do is to take the regulatory requirements that USDA mandates and translate that into an applicable educational training resource. So it really is important to get the boots on the ground perspective. And so that's the operators right there to really see, you know, what are your challenges with this and that, and how we can create that into something that is usable for our, the, the operator. So taking the, the requirements, regulatory pieces and mandates and translating that into something that is very useful for the operators in. And so in order to do that, it is important that we bring in the operators, the sponsors, the state agencies to gain their perspective. The CACFP providers, as well as higher education researchers. Um, just a few resources that I do want to highlight and promote before we move over into the training aspect. Um, as a result of COVID, we created a COVID-19 landing page. So again, you can download some fact sheets and posters that you can put around how to prevent the spread of COVID, um, the proper use of gloves and things like that, how to wash your hands, when to wash your hands, effective hand washing techniques. So um, just kind of a one-stop shop that's related to COVID-19 and how to access that information. Uh, another thing that a higher priority that we want to promote is our child nutrition sharing site. Um, this is sort of, again, a centralized repository of information, resources, templates, menus, and tools that districts, allied organizations, and other entities that are involved in this landscape um, have submitted these resources. So again, we were talking about not reinventing the wheel. The idea behind the child nutrition sharing site is that you can go and peruse a multitude of resources that not created by ICN, but created by state agencies and districts and allied organizations. They have been vetted. There are also some teen nutrition training grant deliverables. Um, so again, you can peruse this in um, various categories and being able to identify recipes and templates and things like that. So again, it's that sort of one-stop shop. Um, so you don't have to go to multiple um, allied organizations websites. And this is just another screenshot of the CNSS. Um, we um, have highlighted, um, we have a COVID-19 link here as well, and you'll find helpful links and CDC resources and additional relevant information. Another um, big priority that we're promoting is the Child Nutrition Recipe Box. Um, this is um, a place where all of the USDA recipes are housed for schools as well as CACFP. And um, all of the recipes are standardized to USDA standards and they meet the meal pattern requirements. And so again, you can go here and find some really exciting and creative um, standardized recipes to kind of provide some creativity to your menu planning. And then uh, another kind of um, new um, format that we're doing is uh, we have a podcast series. So we have an iBytes podcast, but we're also launching our Culinary Institute. And so we just launched the Mix Up, which is another podcast series where our chef speaks with other culinary experts across the country to share what they're doing as it relates to culinary aspects um, in the program. And then I always want to highlight, we have a hashtag, hashtag IC Inspire to serve. Um, so if you're doing anything, cross-promoting anything, you know, using that hashtag and our social media channels. So that's just a quick summary of some <laughs> major priority items that we have going on um, at the Institute currently. All I can say is like, wow, 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 right? <laughs> and the best part is all of the hand-washing um, flyers, the one page. So in Anne Arundel County, when the, you know, the pandemic started and our staff were out, and we're like, how do we communicate with them all, right? We're in 127 sites. We have staff everywhere. 
Um, so every night they get a nightly email and we include all of the hand washing. So we've used oh, the videos, that's neat. <laughs> but the three flyers. So I'm sure if my staff's watching, they're like, yeah, that's what we got. So <laughs> it's really, um, it's such a resource. It's such a tool. It's something any food service director, right? Or it doesn't have to be the directors. It could be, right? The, the, right? Mm -hmm. It's for every yeah. single person in the kitchen. Go to this website, right? Look at all the resources that are there. And it's just presented, um, it's clean, it's professional, it's so easy to use. And I think you've said it so perfectly at the beginning, you pick and choose the little pieces that you need. And the best part I think that I heard just in that little brief description is that you take that federal language, right? That is sometimes not always English, right? I mean, I, I've been in the business a long time and sometimes I'm like, I'm not really sure what they're asking, but to be able to break that down is just perfect for all the end users to be able to use it. So sure. Dr. Hall Campbell, thank you. Um, I love that we were able to partner so many times and that I'm able to collaborate and work with you side by side because you're truly an inspiration. Thank you. And also just one other thing before we pass the torch on to my colleague, um, we're always looking for stories to share. So, you know, if you're doing something, we want to promote that we're doing webinars and um, all types of things. So I know you're doing wonderful work and just want to be able to share that with others. So thank you so much for all that you're doing. Thank yes. you. All right. Training, another favorite topic. Yes. Uh, so uh, Lisa Rogers, right, is going to join us as the our executive director of training. Um, I am actually an associate director of training at the Institute. Go. All right. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we just saw a great snapshot of all that the Institute has to offer. But can you just share with our viewers, you know, a little bit, you know, about yourself and then what's your role at the Institute and how you um, look at, I think, everything that you do through the training lens? Well, um, my area of expertise and my wheelhouse right now is is uh, live face-to-face -face training. So um, I work with a remarkable team of professionals. We have six members. I supervise six members of our training team. And our team takes care of all the logistics of live face-to-face -face training. So from the time a training is requested or planned at the Institute, until the last bit of paperwork is submitted as the deliverable for the USDA, um, our team is responsible for handling all of the details and logistics of training. And so I think, and I'm probably going to, you know, ask a, a question a little bit off, you know, the training, right. but not really. So we have in Anne Arundel County in the past worked with the Institute. Mm -hmm. And when you're developing the trainings, maybe you could just touch a little bit about that. And I think um, Dr. Hall Campbell, you talked about it, that you bring the folks from, you know, the boots on the ground. So I know some of our staff, myself including, and some of our area specialists were able to come down when you're, um, I guess you're, is it like your run through of the training before it's released? A pilot. It's probably not called a run through, but. It's, we do pilot trainings um, before we uh, send them out as finalized live trainings, we do offer pilot opportunities and it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I miss the most about um, the pandemic right now. We love bringing people into the Institute and it is, and they are always so excited to be part of the pilot because they really feel like they have some input mm -hmm. um, for the final product. So yes, we, we do pilot our trainings uh, at the Institute before we really roll them out as as a training but it's a great opportunity for them to get uh, free training um, get to uh, see how the institute runs and and what we do so it's always wonderful to, to host a group for a pilot and I think being part of that you know on behalf of myself and my team that have been able to come down thank you for that because I think it I don't know it just puts the face to the, the product that you're doing, and you do feel like you have a voice. I mean, I think you come out more inspired about that one training and how you can even extend it further into your own district, so. Well, I and it's really important when y'all come to see us too, because we get to see you and interact and our staff gets to see about all the work that they do um, when we get to meet with you all, because we're so inspired by what you do, just bringing you in is so it's, it's important for us to see you all as well. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing that. So let's talk about, you know, just the importance of school food service trainings. Like, why do we need them? And, and, and why is it such a focus for you all to provide us? this training opportunity. I mean, there's a whole professional standards and development, but um, why, you know, why, why are you doing this for us? Well, 
it's really important uh, to ensure that all child nutrition professionals have the knowledge and training to serve safe and healthful food to our children. So, um, and without training, I, I probably wouldn't have a job. So um, we we take it very seriously. And um, in, in the, the part that we play, we wanna ensure that everything is correct and they get everything that they need so that they are able to get the uh, meaningful training that they have come to expect from the Institute. So it is very important and our training sessions are, um, of course, we're very proud that they're accredited by the School Nutrition Association. Mm -hmm. And also most of our face-to-face -face training at our, sessions are also accredited by the Commission on Dietetic Registration. So it's very important for us to uh, provide training that uh, can contribute to their uh, professional standards. I mean, all of our trainings cover the key areas of operations, administration, uh, communications and marketing and nutrition. So some will just focus on one aspect of the key area, but some will uh, trend, uh, uh, provide more key areas in one session. So that's really important to us. And, and I think for the viewers watching, you know, it's something like, and I often hear it maybe from parents or from administration in schools, and they'll say like, so your staff are all trained on this. And we say, everybody's trained on these aspects, you know, and it, it could be the customer service or that marketing piece, or it's that important HACCP or, you know, what's the hazard analysis critical control point? What's the temperature that we're cooking products to? And it's every single person. So I think it gives our staff too just a, like just such a good sense of responsibility and um, credibility for everything that they do. And then we report that to USDA. So when we're being audited in our administrative review, we say, here's all the training that we've had for all of our staff. It wasn't just the director level or mm -hmm. assistant director or whatnot. Every single person gets those you know, training components that they need to be effective to serve the best quality food that they can and always ensure the safety, you know, for the students that we serve. So right. I think that's what's so important. Yeah, when you think about other professions like, you know, physicians and attorneys mm -hmm. and those type of careers, they're required to get so many CEUs. And so that's one of the beauty of the professional standards mandate is that it's ensuring that the operators are each year making sure that they receive the the training aspects that they need to be able to manage and operate their program. You're receiving millions of dollars in federal funds. And so making sure that you're trained and equipped to, you know, account for those funds and, and report that and being accountable for it is also a critical aspect. And so training is the way to do that. And mm -hmm. right, it's not just a director, it's every individual that's involved to make sure that those and I think it, it boosts the self-esteem, right? Absolutely. I think our staff. I, it's empowerment. It's empowerment. It, it truly it's, is. So, and I think, that, I think that's the value that I know that they're getting so much of the real training aspect of it, mm -hmm. but just that boost of self-confidence in their self-esteem and, and they are valued at that school level and by us. So I think that's truly, that's the underlying um, success and I guess value of what we do. Um, how about, let's talk, you know, and we talked a little bit, I know uh, Dr. Hall. Campbell, you mentioned the COVID pieces, but, you know, Ms. Rogers, how, how did we really look at that, right? Like, obviously, on March 16th, we said, we're going to serve curbside. And I remember yeah. my exact words to our superintendent was, Dr. Alato, I can do anything for two weeks. You know, like, <laughs> we can do it. Um, here we are, right? Uh, so how, and what's that process for you at the Institute to say, well, now everybody's curbside, nobody's in the school building. And there's inclement weather and there's transportation of food in and out. And how do you, you know, how do you give everybody the resource to effectively package food, deliver the food in a very short window through the window of a car? Right. Or well, in the it, backpack of a bike rider, right? It, they come up on the bike, we're putting it in their backpack. Well, one thing we always say is an apron is a cape on backwards because <laughs> truly um, our child nutrition professionals are heroes all the time. But the pivot that you all have done during this pandemic is just remarkable to me. And I'm always humbled um, when I hear these stories and, you know, 
anybody who listened to me, I'm going to say, these are the frontline workers. They haven't stopped. They didn't get to do virtual school. They're, they're under the tents. They're on the buses. And so um, anything that we've been able to do to support that or help that has been so meaningful um, to our entire staff. And so when, uh, when we had to pivot, I, I always try to think about what you all have done. And so what can we do to support that? So yes, back in March, we, it's, I'm like you, well, we'll do some virtual training for a month. We'll get through the summer and it'll be fine. And so what we did is we took our materials that we already had because we do face-to-face -face training and we send the materials out. And so we, we, we rely on consultant trainers to, to provide the outreach that we have. So we found some of our stronger consultant trainers. We asked them to take some materials and adapt them for a virtual training format. And we asked them to um, consider an audience that was very new to virtual training. Mm -hmm. And then they wouldn't have the printed materials. And so we started, we rolled out some food safety topics and our trainers were remarkable. And then our staff, uh, our IT staff uh, trained us, trained them and trained us on how to use Zoom. And so we started rolling out this virtual training and it had has been so well received and since uh, I think we rolled it out April 20th and since then we've provided 160 virtual wow. training sessions so um, and every time and, and the opportunity for our team has been we call it the highlight of our pandemic because we have we've gotten the opportunity to be with our our audience and we don't usually get to do it when it's face to face and we've gotten to be with our trainers and observe the the work that they do and be able to support the training our goal with our uh virtual training it's kind of, you know we talk about coming into the building we are proud of our hospitality and the support that we provide so we tr we're really trying to emulate that with our virtual training so um it has been a true labor of love so we we just feel so lucky to be able to to help support what you all do during this time. I, I just can't uh, say it enough. We, we really appreciate everything that you all are doing. Thank you. And I think it was so hard because it's ever changing, right? Oh, so gosh, you don't know. You don't know that. And, and people will sign up for these trainings. I say, I'm sorry, I can't come because uh, we've got I've got to work in the kitchen. All of my staff is out with COVID. I mean, we're hearing all these stories and then they're coming to the training and they're home. I've, I've got to stay home. We're quarantined. I've got my children, but they, you know, we just try to yeah. adapt to that because yes it is so ever-changing mm -hmm. for you all and and it was hard I think you know going back to just the regulations coming out right so at one point I remember saying if we don't get this waiver I don't know what we're going to do if we don't get this waiver I don't know what we're going to do because we didn't want to stop serving kids right yeah. and so I think it was so important and you're just waiting 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 like I, I hope everybody's hearing and we know USDA was hearing us but what do you do you know what's that yeah. next step and then as that stuff comes out, I mean, for a while there, it was so fast and furious. I was like, I hope I, I captured it, right? You. Well, that was one of the things about it. Like, you know, we, we have like handbooks and manuals on like emergency preparedness for a hurricane and fire yeah. and a flood, but nobody knew what to do in the, you know, midst of a pandemic. And it was just trial by fire, you know, right? get out there and just feed kids and we'll figure it out on the back end. And you guys have done a remarkable job. And so just trying to talk with, you know, districts, you know, the, the bus routes and just all of the creative, innovative uh, ways that food was meals were continued to be served is just outstanding. And yeah. so I think, you know, that that was one of the pieces. It was just this ingenuity of creative creativity to be able to serve meals and stay safe while doing it keeping mm -hmm. your staff safe and like you like I said there was no manual we were just Thanks. trying to figure this all out together as as you guys were doing those things so yeah and it's funny I think you know our communication was always like we've got it don't worry we've got it mm -hmm. um but you know in the back you're thinking to yourself all right <laughs> you know I, I hope we have this today um yeah. And, you know, the staff, it was, um, I, I don't know, and, and I think, Lisa, you mentioned it about them being the heroes, the cards that they got from families, um, right. just like some simple, like, uh, I was at a school one time, and they had um, one of our children in the back seats, and they had a bird on their hand, and I'm like, is that a real bird? We were all looking at this, and he's like, no, I just brought the bird to say thank you, you know, so it was his little, like, 
plastic bird. Um, so it's just, I think they felt so, so connected to these families. I mean, when you're on the curb with them, they know this family has six, this one has that. Um, how do they know that? I have no idea, but they definitely know, right? Who's in that car, how many meals they're getting. They know the life stories. Um, I think the, the mental wellness that it did for our families, right? They stayed connected to their cafeteria manager or their cafeteria server. Right. Every day they come in that bus loop to get them. They got to see them on school grounds. So it was that sense of normalcy, right? It was that structure of this is the school day and we have to go to school lunch. So they would just right. come up to the, to the side. So Lisa, we only probably have, you know, a minute or, you know, at the most two left, but, you know, in a nutshell, is there anything that you would, you know, share with myself, my staff, all the viewers watching of, you know, why do they come to uh, ICN, right, to get those resources and those great training tools that you have? Well, I mean, we are here to help, and and uh, we we're very proud that we can offer these free resources. And you know, we talk about our face to face versus versus our virtual training. Our virtual training is here to stay, even when we get back to normal. Um, this is we found this is a great opportunity to provide training without the expense or hassles of travel. And, and they have been extremely interactive. Um, we, our evaluations have been so uh, positive. Over 98% of those who've attended our virtual trainings have said that they found the virtual training format effective. So we feel like we've really found a little bit of a unicorn. Um, so with... Uh, People can, anytime they can access our online courses, those are free to get that professional standards and uh, CEUs that they need and all of that good information. We have a help desk and if they call us during office hours, we can help them, let them talk to somebody who can help them. We're just I guess I just want to say, let us help you. Let us um, provide training and support. Um, we we we're here. That is that is our mission, and we are rolling out a new series of virtual training. Uh, the February sessions filled up very quickly. We have a few spaces in March. If you just visit our website, that's where we'll list any uh, free virtual training. And if you join us, it's a live trainer. It's very interactive. We use Zoom. We it's very activity driven, and we feel like we haven't missed much uh, by turning it to virtual from face to face. So we'd love to have anybody who wants to come. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I think it's evident, right? I think not only are we friends, and I really believe that, I think you're the best partners to have and to collaborate with you all and the Institute side by side. I can't thank you enough because you make us in Anne Arundel County a better place, which is a better place than for our students. So for both of you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stay tuned. I'm going to be back again next month with another show of Food for Thought. Thank you.